I've had to move twice in the last two years, um, and every time it's the rents keep going up and up. You can have some down payment, but it's really hard to get a mortgage because the price is so high. I tried to buy a, a detached home probably about six years ago, and it was difficult then. I can't imagine what it would be like now. Ontario's Finance Minister Charles Souza has said that in Toronto's superheated housing market, people with deep pockets are crowding out families. So he will be looking for some fixes today in his meeting with his federal counterpart, Bill Morneau, and with Toronto Mayor John Tory. In fact, Minister Souza is on the phone with me now this morning, a couple of hours ahead of that meeting. Good morning, sir. Thanks for the time today. Good morning, Heather. Thank you. Pleasure to have you here. You've been very forthright and very vocal about some of the problems that you see in terms of Toronto's hot market. They include speculators, property scalpers, as you call them. But let's move beyond the problems to talk about solutions and what seems to be a starting point for solutions. A lot of talk about taxes, vacancy tax, uh, also capital gains tax, foreign buyers taxes. Is this an area we should be watching for today, changes in taxes? Well, all options are on the table. I mean, I mean, there's a, there's a couple of things at play here. I mean, Ontario's economy is strong and it's creating a huge demand. A lot of people want to come here. A lot of jobs are being made available and housing market is going up. But I have three young millennials at home and I don't know how in the world they're going to get a starter home to get into the market. And it's becoming frustrating for so many with regards to the bidding wars that exist. So in terms of solutions, we do have a very comprehensive action plan. The work I'll be doing today is a culmination of much of the consultations we've had over the last uh, few months. And I look forward to discussing with Minister Marneau and John Tory some of their issues, but primarily looking at the Canada Revenue Agency to provide us some support in enforcing some of these uh, speculators to pay their fair share. So specifically, what are you going to be looking for as your endpoint today? Well, as I said, uh, in the coming week, there'll be quite uh, a number of things that I'll be uh, releasing. Uh, uh, the budget comes out on April 27th. Right. Uh, part of that will be a suite of options. I've had meetings with my counterpart in British Columbia, who you know has implemented a foreign tax. Uh, we've always said we want to be more comprehensive than that. We uh, just heard on your program people that are having a tough time in the rental markets uh, as well. Uh, everything is being overpriced. So we're trying to address all of these issues uh, concurrently, recognizing, though, that we don't want to overcorrect the market or put anybody in harm's way, because some of these real estate properties are people's largest asset, that retirement. So we need to protect everything as we proceed forward. Well, that's a pretty important point, isn't it? I mean, striking the balance in terms of speed of cooling down the market. Many within the real estate industry are concerned about slamming on the brakes and the effects that that could have. In terms of time frame, what kind of... Uh, measures are you looking for, Minister Souza? Well, I've made clear that we're going to be addressing this very soon. Both the Premier, myself, and others have recognized the urgency here, uh, knowing that uh, too many uh, families uh, are not able to uh, participate. And it's not just a Toronto issue. It's now grown around the GTA and into the greater Golden Horseshoe. Um, so there's bidding wars. As far as Kitchener and Guelph, all of this is having an impact. Now, again, it's a function of a strong economy and recognizing many people want to contribute and be part of Ontario's prosperity, but not everybody feels like they're part of it. And we just want to make certain that no one's left behind. And some of the measures that we're going to be addressing is to try to protect them as well, while at the so, same time encouraging investment. Well, indeed, again, the balance. So in terms of uh, timing, it sounds like we'll be listening next week when budget uh, may be a little bit more precise in terms of some of these measures. But you raise a very interesting point, and one that we're hearing about this morning in a new report from Royal LePage, as a matter of fact, and I was hearing just a couple of days ago, anecdotally, in London, Ontario, and that is the ripple effect that Toronto's hot market is having in London, in Kitchener, as you mentioned. We had an email, uh, Minister Souza, from a real estate agent in the Muskoka region talking about Huntsville, Bracebridge, Gravenhurst. And what she says to us, we'll pull that up on screen for our viewers, is uh, she's seeing unprecedented activity with serious effect on family housing for locals here. So this is keeping people out of markets in other communities as well. It has to be a major concern for you as the finance minister of the province. Well, certainly, and uh, it is, uh, you know, we want everybody to participate, be part of uh, the marketplace, and speculators that come in, and I'll just take one example. In some of those communities, growing communities, where a lot of development is being made, uh, before construction, 
uh, speculators. I call them property scalpers. They get in there. They, they, they take hold of about 10 or so properties. They hold the paper by way of an assignment and then let it go or flip it at the tail end of the construction and make um, substantial profit without paying their fair share because they take advantage of, of capital gains exemptions. And I'm saying let's close that loophole. It's part of the reason I want to talk with Mr. Mr. Monod about what we should do in that respect. Mr. Tory and others want us to look at vacancies and how can we get more supply into the marketplace to keep up with demand. Right. All of those things are on the table. On the table. And, I, and, and I appreciate the frustrations that communities are having, not just in the region, but around the region, where they're saying, wow, I'm being priced out of the market myself. It, and if you do so, where do you go next? It's still a problem. Let me just ask, as we conclude this conversation anyway, but the other part of the concern is... Uh, people who don't know what to do. You hear in that Royal LePage study, and we're hearing again anecdotally from people who are just paralyzed. They don't know what changes are coming. They don't know what solutions are in the air. What do you say to them this morning? Well, the issue of uncertainty is certainly a, uh, a concern. And I'm also concerned about the notion of frenzy, where people have this thing, the psyche about, I better get into the market because it's always going to go up. Well, we know, and I've been there during the late 80s uh, when the market went down, so we have to be sensitive to that. I do not want to put anybody in harm's way. I don't want to make decisions that create an overcorrection. I do not want to uh, find ourselves interfering uh, excessively, recognizing that market forces will always prevail. Demand and supply are the key, and there's a lot of supply in the mix. we just got to get it out into the marketplace. The demand continues to be strong because so many are looking to Ontario as a destination. Um, and as jobs grow, so does the price of homes. So I recognize those things, and I'm doing uh, collectively with my uh, counterparts the best we can to try to temper the market, to make it sustainable, and protect people's interests. As you say, it's a, the largest investment for most people, a very complex issue, and many very excited to hear all three levels of government sitting down to come up with some solutions. Minister Charles Souza, I appreciate your time very much this morning. Thank you. All the best, Heather.